Hi, I've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Saturday, September 1st. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information. Well, it's September now, typically the most active part of any hurricane season, and although 2018 is likely to be a quieter than normal year and has been so far, uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to have storms during the peak part of the season, and we do have one now, Tropical Storm Florence, way out here in the eastern Atlantic. This passed right by the southern Cabo Verde Islands and is now on its way out into the open Atlantic Ocean, and that's where it will likely remain. It will not get too strong over the next few days as it is moving into an area of more stable air and cooler sea surface temperatures, which we can see here, Florence is uh, right about here, still over warm waters of about 27 degrees Celsius, but it will be moving over an area of more like 26 over the next couple of days. And then the water will get warmer later as it moves into this part of the basin. Uh, but for the next few days, it will likely have a, a damper on how strong it can get um, despite the low shear because of the colder water. As we go out farther in time, in about three days, this is the GFS valid on Tuesday. This is the upper level wind, 200 millibar forecast. This is where Florence would be not very strong, maybe a borderline hurricane here on this particular model, and that may be its real intensity as well, somewhere around there. And we can see this really large upper level trough called the Tut uh, across uh, the central Atlantic. This is strong this year, and this indicates a lot of vertical wind shear. So as Florence moves into this zone, uh, although it's moving into warmer water now, uh, it will be moving into higher shear. So it seems like one thing or another will likely keep Florence from getting super intense at least over the next three to five days. After that, we'll have to see what happens. The storm will be around for a while, over a week, so we have time to watch. As far as the track of this thing goes, here's where the GFS has it on day five. This would be Thursday on the 500 millibar forecast. It may or may not be in this exact location, but it's likely to be somewhere in this area of the Atlantic here, and it's pretty far north already. Typically storms that get this far north, this far east, end up finding a way out into the open ocean and turn north, and Florence is most likely to be no different. Uh, we do have to be just a little careful uh, if this, this banana ridge over the eastern U.S. is strong enough and Florence is weak enough that it tries to get a little bit farther south and sneak underneath and then become a threat to either Bermuda or points farther west if it happens to get trapped under this ridge. It's not impossible, but at this point, it would be pretty remarkable to see it get up this far and then come west. Some models do try to do that, but even if it does, it's many, many, many days out and not even worth thinking about at this time. You might hear about it, but it's a long way from Florence being a threat, and she very well may never be a threat uh, to any other land masses. So we'll just keep a wary eye on this storm as it journeys out into the open water, and we'll see what happens. Uh, other systems to watch, though, in the Atlantic, not just Florence, but we also have a, a disturbance, a tropical wave here in the Turks and Caicos and southeastern Bahamas. You can see the area of cloudiness here. If we zoom in on that a little closer, here's the loop. Uh, we can see the wave uh, associated with the clouds and thunderstorms here. Uh, if you look really carefully at the low-level clouds, you'll see east-southeasterly winds on, the, on this side and east-northeasterly winds on this side. So you can see a little bit of a kinking of the flow. It's doing this, and so there's some, some kind of wave axis in here somewhere. Uh, not very strong, not very amplified, so this is not developing quickly right now, and indeed it probably will be a slow slow organizing system. If we look at the water vapor imagery, you'll see that it's entangled with sort of an upper level trough here, these cirrus clouds moving like this. You can see this curvature in the flow. This is imparting some wind shear on the wave, and there's, of course, some dry air on the back side of this trough as well. And so as the wave interacts with this, this upper level trough, it will likely have trouble developing quickly. Uh, this upper level trough actually extends all the way up here. There's sort of two pieces to it. There's one part here, and there's sort of another upper low east of Jacksonville. These two are sort of going to remain close to each other and back westward along with the wave, which will also be moving westward towards South Florida over the next couple of days and eventually into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Over time, conditions may become a little bit more favorable for this wave. If you look at the GFS forecast uh, for two days out, valid Monday morning, you can see uh, the color here indicates the low-level vorticity showing the location of the wave near South Florida. And the wind barbs here show the upper level wind. So here's upper low number one, and here's upper low number two to its south. And you can see it sort of forms this big upper trough over the wave. This is not a favorable configuration for tropical development. Uh, but over time, it might become a little bit more favorable. If we go out one more day to Tuesday, here's our wave in the Gulf now. And you can see the southern upper low has sort of now uh, become oriented more to the south 
of our wave and this upper low is over Alabama so there's now a little bit of a, a distance between these two and so as our wave tries to wiggle in in between it may find a little bit uh, less shear as this upper low to the south now imparts southeasterly flow aloft that's more aligned with the low level flow so there's less shear in this configuration and although this is still not ultra favorable it could allow for some development here and it would not be surprising to see a tropical storm develop in the eastern gulf if the wave gets enough time the models disagree on whether or not it will have enough time the gfs is a little slow and doesn't really try to develop it until it gets toward the north gulf coast uh, but the europeans a little bit faster and you can see that here by monday morning it already has a storm near the Florida Keys, a weak one, and then it strengthens as it moves northwestward toward what in this run is Louisiana. At this point, details are pretty murky because we don't have any sort of system developed at the moment. When you have them disorganized such as this, uh, we don't know where the center of circulation, if one is going to form, will form uh, because you have this large area of cloudiness within which you could get a surface low. And so the exact details of where it moves, etc kind of hard to know. What we do know is, is it's not likely to develop very fast on its way towards South Florida. So what you can expect here is an enhancement of showers and thunderstorms as we get out toward Monday, uh, probably Sunday night through Monday, we'll be getting wet and gusty conditions for South Florida, probably nothing beyond that. But as the system gets into the Gulf of Mexico and conditions become a little bit more favorable, uh, we might see some more bona fide tropical development, and this could become something to watch for the North Gulf Coast, as this is likely to be steered northwestward to this part of the Gulf somewhere. Not exactly sure just yet, but it is only a few days out from this being relevant, so start paying attention to the forecast just in case. Right now, the National Hurricane Center gives a 40% chance of this developing at some point over the next five days. So we'll keep a close eye on that, as well as Florence currently moving away from the Cabo Verde Islands and no threat to land anytime soon at all, and we'll just be over the open Atlantic for many days to come, but we'll keep a closer eye on this wave as it is closer to home and may impact the Gulf of Mexico as we head into next week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.